Hi there. I'm Chef Dennis, and today we're here with Around the Kitchen Table, and it's a special edition because my co-host, Susan Sarah, is in Milano, and she's I'm also got some special guests with her today. Oh, right. She is in a uh, kitchen showroom, and my friend Nazim Beltran is here, and I think his wife's going to be making an appearance, Elisabetta. Did I say that right? I hope. That's correct. That's correct. You did say the name right. She just walked right. in through the door, so she'll be showing up soon. Great. So uh, we're just going to say hello for a few minutes. Susan, how you doing there? I heard you had a little trouble with your phone, but uh. Oh. Yeah, well, you know, it's extremes. It's fabulous, and then the phone, oh, you know, but who cares about the phone? That can be replaced. You know, but I, I am here at this, I'm, maybe you can see behind me, and I'm I going can. to take, it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take you on an exclusive tour of this beautiful showroom. It's the Effetti uh, Italian Kitchens. Beautiful, you know, I mean Armani and all this Italian fashion. I had to get my hair done very short and very stylish, otherwise they wouldn't let me into Milan. <laughs> that, so, that, that's, that's a typical rule over here. <laughs> I know, so I got that done yesterday, and I, said, and I said to Ernesto, I said, you have to make it, I'm going to Milan, so do whatever you want to do. So, you know, we've got it very short and... You know, <laughs> but it's a wonderful, I, it's just beautiful. I, and I look forward to a week of going to the um, kitchen show and eating whatever I can eat every day. How about you, Chef? How are you doing? How was your weekend? Weekend was great. The weather here in Florida has been perfect, uh, maybe just a little hot. But other than that, you know, I, I can't complain, that's for sure. Uh, beautiful sunny day. And just relax and nothing very much planned. I think we went to the parks one day and honestly, oh yeah, Friday night we went to the parks to see Paul Revere and the Raiders. Uh, Man, which was, I'm so oh, jealous oh, about that. Oh, well, let me tell you, don't don't be too jealous because Paul Revere is 74, and wow, <laughs> and Mark Lindsay was not there, so <laughs> it was not quite the show we had anticipated. But this week. Uh, the village people are coming to Disney. The so village great. people. Oh, my goodness. So I'm looking forward to that one. I figure it doesn't matter who's out there yelling YMCA. It'll still be good. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and you have a great dish for us. Now, what was the inspiration to think about tiramisu? Well, you know, we were trying to come up with something Italian. And, you know, I cook a lot of Italian dishes that I've adapted. But this was taught to me by an old friend many years ago and she was half Italian, half French and a Cajun at the at the boot. So it was her her grandmother had taught her this uh, many, many years ago. Her grandmother had been from Italy and you know I of course adapt everything just a little bit to make it mine. Uh, Nazim saw the uh, Kahlua bottle and started hyperventilating that I was going to, to <laughs> Adapt my tiramisu with a little coffee liqueur. I, I can see his wife back there gasping. So, <laughs> but again, it's still better than most of the American tiramisu you ever find in this country, and pretty comparable to what you'll find in Italy. It is really a, an excellent recipe. It's an old-time recipe. So I thought that would be good to make, and it is my favorite dessert. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have it from time to time too. And I mean, how much food is there for me to? Sampled Nazim. I mean, what should I try? Uh, and, and, tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll get tomorrow we'll get started. Okay. The party starts tomorrow. The food and the wine and everything. It's going to be a great week. Oh and yes. You brought, you brought the sunshine with you, which is great. Oh oh, it was not um, it was not sunny last week. Oh, it's typically it always rains during the, the furniture fair. Well, okay. It's typical. Okay, and it's hello. Weird. It's weird you uh, brought Alyssa the sunshine. Hello, Elizabeth. You just joined Hi. us. You weren't here before. I'm Susan. Good to see you. I'm glad you could come. I just arrived. I just stepped in. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And Nazim, so. Yeah, and, and Nazim is, you're right here in Milan. So I don't know if people realize that. You're, you're, and you're not so far from, your office is not so far from where yeah, I am. close by. And the reason I moved to Milan was because of this precious woman here. Yeah. <laughs> and can she cook? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh now, we were in the States, yeah. you hit the, hit the normal, well, as the Pope Catholic, 
know, can't <laughs> Oh, yeah. So what else is going on with you, Chef? Oh, just about, you know, not a whole lot here. But, Elisabetta, you have a cookbook, don't you? Yes. Yes. It's a very nice little jewel. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with a lot of passion, so I'm happy about the results. Very good. You know, I'm we're going to have to get you on our show cooking sometime, too. Uh, I will. I will. Yes. Can you get it from For me? I was wondering, can you get it from Amazon? Uh, no, it's it, it's um it's on the iPad. We did the electronic version on the iPad, and it's on blurb.com. And I'll put in I'll put in the event. I'll put the the link to the to, to where you can do. Yeah, absolutely. But we, should, an we iPad do have to get her cooking the, cooking one of the recipes from the book. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, excellent. <laughs> We'll have a special edition show for that, for sure. <laughs> All okay, right. well, um, you, you ready to go, Chef? I, I think so. Up. You know, uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start my end here. Uh, Mia Voss is in the house. Uh, Lena Bellamonte's in the house. They're all saying Maybe, hi. Yeah. Um, Wade Harmon's here, and uh, some of mine are blocked. So, but uh, we've got a nice viewership. But yeah, I'm gonna start on the uh, Sabayon, which is the French version. Uh, of this I'm making because I always forget how to say it in Italian. What am I making in Italian? What's a sabayon? It is a um... zabayone. Zabayone. It's correct. Z Zab the, pronunci the pronunciation is perfect. Okay. All right. So this is what I'm going to be making uh, to start my tiramisu, and this is the big difference in most American tiramisu's that you'll find, or uh, as I like to say, bastardizations of them. Though, so uh, not the very good ones. Uh, it's not that difficult to make. But it just does take a little bit of time, and it takes a little bit of effort, and uh, you'll have one of the best tiramisu you'll you could ever hope for. So I have a double boiler method here. I don't use a regular double boiler because if I do that, the pot has too many edges that I can't get into. So by doing a bowl over a pot, I can I can whip it a lot easier, and I can get into all the corners, and I don't have anything really stopping me. So I'm going to whip these eggs for about 7 to 10. And Susan, why don't you take over and talk to our guests? I sure will. I have such a, a, a nice surprise for everyone because we were able to get into the, this shop is closed now, this beautiful Effetti showroom. And um, Luca Vivanti, who is the um, marketing director the export marketing director, he's going to show us around. And I hope you don't get a little bit seasick because I'm actually going to take my computer and and stand to the side of it, my laptop, and try to show you this beautiful um, showroom and, and describe some of what you're seeing. And maybe you can get some ideas and inspiration for your existing kitchen or for a new remodel. So here I go. I'm going to get up from my chair. And I hope I don't get you seasick. So I think what I will do first is I will first let me introduce you to Luca Vivanti. Um, now where are you? Yes. Okay. This is Luca Vivanti. Luca, saying hello. To hello. You. Okay. No. Hello. Ciao, Luca. <laughs> Ciao, Luca. Yes. Yeah, so, Luca, um, first tell us about. Effetti. Effetti is is a new brand for no. the United States. I mean, for the United States, it's new. No? Not for completely. Okay. Uh, and speak a little bit closer. Yeah. Effetti. It's uh, an old brand in Italy, born at, um, forty years old. Uh, forty years ago. Uh, this year is at the anniversary of 14 uh, in the uh, USA, it is present, especially in New York, uh, from uh, some year, more or less uh, five, six years. Yeah. From uh, some year, we have uh, a showroom in Manhattan, 27th Street. And uh, um, from there, we are starting to introduce uh, FD around uh, all the market in the USA. Oh. Uh, in, we have a, a showroom also, a presence in LA. We are opening a showroom in uh, Miami in the Van District. Oh, good. And uh, next, uh, the next uh, will be a showroom uh, in uh, New Jersey and one another in Westchester, uh, in New York State. 
Okay. Um, so, so do you, will you, what if other parts of the country wanted your kitchens? Could they work with a design firm from Manhattan if they live in California or someplace? They, mm, we work uh, with uh, interior designer architects and directly with uh, private people that love uh, special kitchens. Oh, okay, so, so you don't have to go through a showroom, private designers can work with a showroom for their clients. Oh, oh. I see. Okay. So tell me more about Effetti. You have a modern design. It seems to me that it's it's a it's a warm, modern feeling. How, how would you In talk Effetti. about Effetti? Maybe because Effetti uh, it's a company from a customer. In Tuscany, it's a region where food is something special for us. Uh, we love a lot to use a hot uh, effect, a warm effect, with uh, wood, with uh, soft colors. Uh, yes, and, okay. And, um, yeah. And, and house are very comfortable. Okay, so do, do you see many? Do you see many kitchens that like the open, what we call the open floor plan, and the kitchen is part of the dining room and, and part of the family room? Actually, this is the trend, uh, but uh, with our programs, uh, we can do everything because flexibility and customization are for us uh, yeah. the best uh, at the first. But but as far as trends, what do you see for kitchens as for trends? For trends, uh, um, kitchen is probably the space more uh, interesting in a house to create a, a relationship. Um, the chef that uh, prepared the food with the friends or on uh, the same room, uh, speaking and talking. Uh, so, so you're seeing social trends. Yes. You're seeing yes. a big social part of the kitchen. It, it probably it's a turn back. If you think that uh, uh, immediately after the Second War, especially in the USA, uh, born uh, the idea of a uh, living kitchen, the actual turn is to turn back at that time to try again the same. Uh, and gather together yes. with friends and family, and yeah. everyone cooks. And multi, I, I know in the U.S. we have multi generations that are cooking. And okay, what about trends in colors? Do you see uh, whites or woods or gray or what's popular? Uh, actually, our uh, soft color, not exactly white, but uh, light pink, light uh, green, uh, more soft. Uh -huh. Not uh, not ice color. Yeah. Like uh, total white, uh, total uh, cold. Yeah. So soft uh, colors. Soft colors, uh, mixed with uh, warm wood. Uh, like in this case, uh, for example, uh, uh, we are seeing a table in uh, elm, natural elm. Ah. Uh, we love a lot to use uh, natural woods. Uh, and I see uh, matte finishes as well. I don't see many glossy finishes. I see matte, um, soft. This is uh, uh, depending on the country. Okay. For example, in Europe, uh, uh, the trend is more uh, matte. Uh, yeah. In other part of the world, uh, lost. Okay, and and what about grays? That has grays have been so popular the past few years. Are you seeing more gray? I see some gray over across the way. Yes, that is the warm. It's a warm. That I agree with that. I want to now take um, you for a little bit. Try to show you here some views, and I hope I don't get these seasick. I really do. So here is a long shot of a beautiful wall, and if we go this way, maybe you can see it a little bit better. We have some green plants here. 
Oh, I think the other way. Here we go. Yeah, you can get a good look at this. It's so what it is is yes, the lines are clean. Um, they are clean, they are straight, but you can see a mixture of we have marble, we have wood, we have glass, um, some stainless steel, and the soft, soft grays. And sometimes you will see a mixture of gray, uh, soft gray and wood, which we see here. And maybe you can see what Luca is. Yeah, now look at that. That is That can be multifunctional. It is a t table, it can be a prep space. It can be anything. And then also a popular trend I have seen is concealed storage. I've seen that quite a bit. So that's very exciting. And when you have an open plan, you may want to conceal the kitchen. So it looks it doesn't look so utilitarian. That's the message there. Um, and of course, we have a beautiful sink and faucet here, very sexy. I mean, the, let me tell you, these sinks and faucets today, they are so sexy. And here is another type of pantry, which is glass. And it's a, what, what this is, it's an architectural sort of um, point of view, an architectural statement. It's a feature in the kitchen, a focal point, with revolving shelves. And I think it's cool. It's It's... You know, it's sleek, yet it's just kind of organic in its shape. So over here, yes, tell me, now what's new in your collection? Is a, this a new model. It's more than a model, is a concept of kitchen. It's a concept. So the, the hand, the doors can be chosen from all our collection. The concept is uh, to be uh, an event uh, to separate the part of the kitchen from the living day with uh, a functional element with uh, all the necessity in uh, only one block. Aha! Uh -huh. So it is, it's almost like, um, uh, you know, in clothing you have color blocks. Here you have, it seems like you have functional blocks. Of, uh, and it's a visual piece too. So you have different, um, yeah, different different blocks. And yeah. is that what you call it? And uh, all blocks is a <clears throat> uh, has a function: uh, cooking, uh, column for uh, container uh, things, and on the other side. We can put uh, also screen for TV. We can put uh, everything. Yes, I see. I see. And this is a beautiful wood. What? What? what is this, this also is elm? Elm, natural elm. Okay. Okay. This is just beautiful. Now, can you open up the? I mean, this is where the fun is when you open up the doors in these Italian kitchens. This is so much where the fun is. The rolling shelves. And yeah, and here, okay. Oh, and you have a drawer liner in here. And what's what's behind here? Okay, that's just the cabinet. How about over here? Then we have this beautiful display, like that. Gray again. Gray is popular. I can tell you that popular in the states. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Okay, now. And then you close the top. So what happened? What you just saw here is you have a drawer within a drawer. But the point is for uh, so that you don't have the visual of numerous drawers. And so all across you have simple, simple front elements. So actually, for a small kitchen, uh, your kitchen can look larger because you don't have a, a million cabinets next to each other. This is the way uh, the Italians uh, do it with beautiful modern design. They, you know, they think it through and have simple, simple larger comp uh, components often. And then we see shelves. Anything you want to tell us about this? 
<coughs> the function uh, of uh, this element uh, is to have uh, all the things near to your hand uh, when you prepare the food. So uh, we have thought uh, a space uh, open with uh, all the elements uh, ready to use. I see. You know, that, that, I'll tell you, that is very interesting to me because it looks like these open shelves are about a few inches off of the counter, which is very unusual, very unusual. But it also means you can hide some things in that space underneath. Every time we study a uh, model of kitchen uh, uh, or uh, something about a new way of use the kitchen, we text uh, a lot before present the things uh, to control that uh, two things are always uh, present in our collection. Resistance, so we, go, uh, we offer a longer warranty to our clients. Uh -huh. uh, economic. Uh, and practical. I see. Uh, if all three these elements are present, we introduce. Mm -hmm. Without one of these, we stop the project and we start again. Interesting. But very, very. It must take you a long time to come out with each concept. If you think that we have a client that turned back to, to try uh, FAP, uh, uh, after uh, 20, 25 years, uh, we've old uh, our kitchen. After 25 years, uh, just yeah. a little old. Yes. And w they won't uh, reply with a new kitchen, but with the same long. Position. Yes, I see that. And you know, uh, I, I want to show you this wall treatment here. I don't know if you can fully appreciate it, but it is a beautiful, beautiful texture. I will stand back a little bit, and I will tell you something too. Oftentimes, less is more. I will tell you that from a uh, design standpoint, I wouldn't be surprised if that's true from a culinary um, point of view also. But in this case, the, the wall, it, it's its own simple element. It's its own design. It doesn't need a million things or a million upper cabinets on it. And I, I will tell you this, too. Sometimes you have to um, uh, sacrifice a little bit of storage for aesthetics. Uh, so, so far, so good. How, how are you doing, Chef? Sounds good. I'm about ready to move on with the, move on with the next step. So. Uh, okay, let's do it. I'll walk back, and you take it from here. Okay. And thank you, thank you very much, Luca Vivanti. Thank you. Thanks thank a lot. You. All right. So uh, yeah. I whipped up the eggs, and I did put some sugar in them. And I started the whipping first before I did add the sugar in. So I, I uh, streamed some sugar in, and I put it in, and I'm you want to whip them enough. Well, this is cooking the eggs first of all over the double boiler. And then it's also uh, getting them fuller and thicker so the tiramisu will hold together really well. And this is what's making the base. So now I'm going to add in some mascarpone. And then I'm going to whip this into the eggs. And the eggs are relatively cool right now. So now I'm just going to mix this in. And the one important thing you do want to make sure when you're doing your eggs is that the sugar is dissolved all the way. This by itself is just wonderful. This cream. This can be used. You can make individual tiramisus. You can make a big pan like I'm going to make. And it is just a lovely, thick, rich cream. You just want to get all that mascarpone incorporated well. And I know some people have problems with this step, and it comes out too thin, and that's because they didn't get their eggs quite thick enough. And you'd have to be very careful when you're doing the eggs also that you don't end up with scrambled eggs, because that would not make a very good tiramisu. No, 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 no. <laughs> very good. Okay, so now you, I'm going to add... Can you send us some so we can taste it over here? I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Although with the with the tiramisu judges there, I might be afraid. <laughs> I mean, cheese and cheese and sugar and and eggs. I mean, what could be better? Well, now we're gonna have some whipped cream in too. Okay, that's better. Okay, so this will this will finish it off. I'm actually gonna fold this in. Put in part of the time. And I'm just going to fold this into it. And I didn't have any sugar in the whipped cream. And uh, one of the few comments I do get is sometimes that they think it's a little sweet, the tiramisu, so you can always add a little less sugar to it if you want to. But we think it's just right with the contrast between the coffee. And now, I don't have any... um, Chef, what, what kind of sugar are I'm do sorry? you like? What kind of sugar do you like to use? I know that now there's all these gourmet types of sugar. For this, it was just white sugar, but I try to find bar sugar because it dissolves better. It's not as heavy, uh, which is a super fine sugar. Mm -hmm. That's always my choice, and I didn't have any today, so I had to use regular sugar. Now, you can also take the regular sugar, and you can pulse it a few times in a food processor. You oh. just don't pulse it too much so it doesn't start to become 10x sugar. But that'll help. It, it, it dissolves a little faster. And I usually have it. I've had a hard time finding it down here in Florida. And you think with all the bars there, <laughs> we'd have it. But um, yeah. I have not been able to find it yet. So I put the whipped cream in in a couple, you know, two, three portions, not all at one time. And folded it in, trying to keep some of the body of the tiramisu, the cream. This has been a lot of whipping for me. My uh, carpal tunnel is kicking in big time here. Oh, I hear you. It's good you got, it's good you got the muscle, Chef. Yeah. The chef used to have the muscle. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> All right, so this is just about done. I'm just trying to fold it in so it's really all blended together. You don't want to see any real splotches of whipped cream. And it should be a nice pale yellow. And I still do have a little. I have to mix in here. Now, can you mix it too much? Will bad things, will bad things happen? Well, I think you can mix anything too much. Um, if you start to whip this too much, you know, you could, the, the cream could get whipped a little too much in here. Everything could get whipped a little too much. That's why we kind of fold it in. Because you want to maintain some of the airiness. And we've already whipped the cream to its full extent. Can I, can I, make, can I make a comment that might get me in trouble? Can you do, sure. this, in the, can you do this in the blender? Uh, I would not. Okay. Doesn't mean you can't. But it's better to do it by hand. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you could put it in a mixer. Very slow, and you'd probably be okay. okay. Hey, Chef, what about yes. adding? And I don't know, this may be the worst suggestion ever. I just thought of it. What about adding um, lemon zest? Uh, you could. Okay. You could. It wouldn't not go, it would go. So, you know, you could put a little lemon zest in there if you wanted to, it would give it a little different flavor. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer my tiramisu and I've got Savarati ladyfingers and they are the crunchy ones not the soft cake ones okay so let's make sure to do these now I have my cool coffee and I like to add a little bit of coffee liqueur mm. into my mixture again you know it's what I like you don't have to it's not a necessity you you can use something else if you like but this is how I do it, and I put them in just enough to get them wet. You don't want to soak them too long. You don't want to float them. You want them to absorb some of the liquid, but you don't want them to be soggy. And this is like some of the worst tiramisu I've ever had was because there was so much liquid in the lady fingers, and they were so soggy. They just ruined the experience, oh. and that's not something you want. Because they're going to get softer as they sit. And 
right now because you're not going to be able to eat this right away anyway. Sorry to say, if anyone's making it. And we're just going to form a few layers here. And that'll be our bottom layer. And this is about an 8 or a 9 inch pan, somewhere in that range. And I'm going to put half the cream, or pretty close to it, in. Let's build a little here. Julia would say, nobody saw it. All right. And then we're just going to even this out a little bit. And the intensity of the coffee, if you have a strong, nice espresso or coffee, the contrast between that and the cream is really amazing. And I use about a pack and a half of these lady fingers for my tiramisu. In fact, I went to get them today and I only had a pack and I had to run to the store real quick. And luckily, they have some. Yeah, so I wonder if there are variations of ingredients of flavors in tiramisu. What what other flavors do you think would go well to add? Um, what do you think, Nazim? Ay ay ay. You know, we're, we're, the classics. Uh, yeah, you could do variations on the theme, but I think. Um, Don't you use marsala or marsala in the tiramisu? No, not in the sabayon. Yeah, yeah, you can hand a little. But yeah. You can, yeah, but yeah, you could handle a little bit of, of those into there. I've never been real fond of it other than in chicken marsala, so. Uh, yeah, well, you're the expert on chicken marsala. <laughs> well, I don't know about in that. The meantime, in the meantime, I'm looking at everybody who's visiting. There's David Leopold. There's uh, Sonny Cadwallader. I want to say mm -hmm. a big shout-out to everybody who's watching. Lori Saliata and... Uh, Mia Voss is uh, in the house, as always, and that's great to have her here also yes, visiting. Yes, I've been looking at the comments, too. They're great. They're excited. Big hello to Elena Bellomonti from Italy, who lives in London and who I personally met on Hurl when I went up to London. Oh, I see. Cool, great that everybody's tuning in to the fantastic tiramisu. Well, look, how the chef, look how the chef likes to clean. Well, you know, he, he, everything's in order. Everything's looking good. Got a Not a sloppy kitchen at all. No. So now we're going to put the next last layer of cream on. Now, can I ask one question? The calorie factor here. Uh, can we bring that oh, up here? Oh, come on. You can't talk about that. <laughs> I don't think there are any in tiramisu. No. No, it's light. <laughs> I heard that the angels touched it and removed all the calories. <laughs> they, made, they made an exception on it. Yes. Exception. <laughs> it's like when I was in Italy. Every time I was in Italy, it seemed like it was a holiday. And we get in a cab, and they always told us it was a, um, well, what the heck, it was, it was a special rate because it was always a holiday. Yeah, well, that's why I moved here, Chef. You know, I mean... Holiday-wise, this place is paradise compared to the States. <laughs> oh. All right. So anyway, there's our tiramisu. You saw how fast it was to make. It really is that simple. It will be, it will amaze your friends, your relatives. And then I'm just going to take some cocoa. And sprinkle some cocoa on the top. I don't like to overdo it with cocoa because I've choked a few times on too much. And I would cut it for you to show you how nice it's going to look, but it does have to sit for about four to six hours before you can cut it. So that, my friends, is tiramisu. Wow. Excellent. That is great. Bravo. Bravo. 
Right, I, does it go in the refrigerator after this? Yeah, now it's got to go in the fridge. Okay. How, 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 and time-wise, how long? Uh, four to six hours, let it sit up. I always like to let it sit up overnight. And that way you don't have to worry about it. And if it does last that long in the household, this <laughs> will hold up. It will, it will last for a week before it starts weeping. It is really an excellent. I mean, I've made tiramisu so like the second day. It's all weeping and broken apart. And then, you know, this recipe is really very, very good. And like I said, if it does last in the house, it, it won't weep on you. So it'll be great. That's not our case over here. It lasts basically about three hours, maybe two. And well, <laughs> yeah, we have it for breakfast. Um, it's one of the few things my wife will eat for breakfast because she does love it too. So, I mean, when I make something like this kind of a dessert, she has no problem having it for breakfast. So, But, you know, yeah. it's perfect, too. It's perfect, too, when you're entertaining to make it the day before. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, the flavors are going to are gonna marry a little bit more, too. So, you know, it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. So, any – so, I – you know, the, it, it looks terrific, Chef, and I think everyone should have a piece of it. <laughs> well, I am having a party here for Easter. You're more than welcome to come down. It's a Saturday before, and I will be making tiramisu again, a ricotta cheesecake, a chocolate flourless tort, and a whole bunch of other things, too. So. Oh, that sounds great. You know, we so, have a few comments. Uh, we have a few comments here. Uh, Mia says, oh, no, she's saying to... Um, Elena Bellametti. Hi, darling. I love everything Italian, wine, design, food, cars, architecture, swear words, you name it. <laughs> well, Mia, Mia, you better get over here to, the, to, to Italy soon. You know, there's an open invitation from uh, us Italians who live here to come on over. And the chef, the chef knows he's on the list of coming over to Milan. Absolutely. No excuses made. Just no. do it. You just, just, you just have to do it. Um, and then Dr. Dr. Tammy Cashian says, please save me a piece for the after show since I will be working. Um, thank you, and I love your food. Have a good one. And remember, I love the lobster. Now, there must be a story behind that. The lobster? Yeah. Where is, I'm sorry, which comment oh, was that? I, I didn't put it up on the screen. That, uh, let me put it up. That's from... Uh, Dr. Tammy. Oh, I had shown her a picture of the stuffed lobster that I did for uh, for New Year's. Uh, maybe maybe it was that one. I had taken a uh, eight ounce tail and I stuffed it with crab imperial, so it, it was quite impressive. Oh, I it a, sounds. I want to make a shout out also to George Cohn and over back in Mountain View who says I just finished lunch, but this is still making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. It's dessert, George. You got to have room for dessert. <laughs> Yeah, no. Sarah is asking about a flat dish. Uh, I don't know if, if, in the fact that she's saying, is it a flat dish that you need to use? I, I would assume so. Yes. Uh, yeah. It is. It's yeah. It's uh, about two and a half inches deep. Maybe. Two and a half inches, so that you can two do inches, the layering on it. Yeah, two inches, two and a half inches. Yeah, because you just have to get those two layers of uh, of cream in there. So you know, uh, two layers of um, of uh, the lady fingers, two layers of cream. And that's pretty much it, so. Wow. Well, maybe I can have some here. I mean, you have you have me now really wanting to, uh, you know, I mean, I'm here. So it's like vacation money. When you're on vacation, it's If you don't, if like you don't have to in Milan, we're going to be into, and you're going to have, a, you know. It's a, yeah, I mean, when you're away, food, food doesn't have calories and money doesn't have value. So, <laughs> you know, I'm glad I'm only here for a few days. I'm sure you're going to find some excellent tiramisu in Milano, among many, many other things. Uh, yeah, know, and you know, I, while we're talking, you guys go ahead. I'm going to uh, give you another shot of a part okay. of the showroom that you didn't see. And um, then I'll be looking for authentic pizza and whatever I can, whatever I can find. Um, now, this is a shot. I'm not sure you can see it. I'm way... Here we go. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that whole wall there. Mm -hmm. And this is... Yep, you could, before you didn't see the whole wall. So that's, that's a really nice shot of, you know, simple, elegant, modern. And, um, 
you know, just kind of what's happening in Italian kitchens and uh, with the Betty. Oh, and here, down here too, we see some of this warm gray, some of these open shelves we talked about. So another nice look. You know, I can see all of your small appliances down here. Oh, yeah. Your cookbooks. Oh, my God, what a great idea for wasted space. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, here, too, we have a very popular as a wall, like such as this, which is, uh, you know, concealed, very quiet. Very quiet, very, um, you know, similar to that block sort of. Uh, concept that Luca was speaking about before, so I just I just thought I would, you know, stand up and show you a few other shots of this amazing showroom. One more shot. Now take a look at this table and chairs. Can you see that? Oh wow! Look at that. Isn't is that cool or what? So now that's in a more modern black uh, kitchen. I mean, this is Italian chic. Mm -hmm. All the way. So this is it's fun to uh, fun to share these, um, you know, images of what's happening and and to show you what's going on and over here too, you know, these small elements sometimes make such a statement like the lighting fixture. Look at that lighting fixture. Wow. And and a single painting. So you know, so those are just a couple of more. Um, little shots. So, I, you know, fabulous kitchen design and tiramisu. I think we have style covered on all these fronts. What do you think? I think it's a good start. It is. And are you now, going? Now, let me ask you a question. What are you going to do with that tiramisu? Is it going to basically last about three hours, or is it going to go? Is it a? It, it'll probably. Uh, what time is it here? <laughs> uh, we may have some. We may have some tonight for dessert. Uh, Lisa's out right now with some friends, so uh, we have a little late dinner, eight o'clock. If not, we'll have it for breakfast, and then I'm going to disperse some of it among my neighbors, so I don't eat it all. You must have, yeah, your neighbors. You must have very lucky neighbors because they're like, all right, bring it on. <laughs> well, they they have, and I really haven't been making a whole whole lot here yet. I'm still kind of getting my uh, getting my sea legs down here in Florida. But the ones I used to have in New Jersey, uh, one was always at the fence saying, "What's he making today?" You know, because I was blogging a lot more then, and I would be making all kinds. Or they'd see the setup in the kitchen for the lights and for the camera, and she knew I was doing a show, and knew I was making something. So I was always uh, waiting to see what was coming over. Uh, yeah, I was very popular in, this, in our end of the neighborhood. <laughs> but here I haven't taken anything out yet, so we'll see. Let me ask you also, uh, talking about the ingredients, it's, uh, you mentioned before we were talking in the green room that it might be a little bit difficult to get them in Florida as opposed to up north, the mascarpone and uh, all the other ingredients. That, that is a problem. Well, we can find mascarpone, and it always depends on how good it is. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I get mine uh, up north in, in Jersey. Uh, you could find it almost every supermarket there carried mascarpone. It was just, you know, it's enough of Italian population. Down here, you know, like I said, I, I went out to get Savarotti Ladyfingers uh, at a quarter of one because I didn't have enough, I thought. And I was surprised to see that our Publix carried them. In fact, they were on sale. Uh, so I bought extra. <laughs> but... Um, they they pretty much a lot of stores are carrying it more again the quality of it compared to what you can get in Italy I'm sure it's not even close uh, <laughs> but we work we work with what we can get it's sad to say you know just like in Florida I, I haven't found any really really great bread because you know the water's different so my you know, wife when we met in 1992 she was always having problems getting the ingredients she's like I can't get anything in this place. <laughs> No, no. It's, in reality, Italian food is based on ingredients. So it's not that the recipes are so complicated like in uh, French cuisine, and the ingredients are very important. That's that's the problem, you know. So it's hard to make Italian food in other countries because of this. But the recipes are not that difficult to to, to make. No. Yeah. I think you just need to stay with the simplicity of a lot of dishes. And use, you know, like I cook a lot of things, like I'm doing meats or, or seafood. It's olive oil, salt, sea salt, and pepper. You know, I, I don't do some fresh herbs. 
uh, but I don't do much else to them. And it's the simplicity, really, of a lot of the Italian cooking that I love. It's uh, just very wholesome, and you taste the food. Dennis, yeah. I love that you said that. I love that you said that. It is about less is more. It's what I was referring to before. Um, and so, I mean, I can't speak for the food because I'm not a chef, but uh, in design, sometimes the, the, the simplest ele design elements speak the most loudly. And so I think that's what you're saying, too. Yeah, you know, it, it, sometimes we get carried away with ingredients, you know, how many, to see how many different elements we can put. I mean, you watch some of these new cooking shows, and they're building things that have 14 different flavor elements, and, you know, it, they're just too complex, and we forget to savor, you know, individual components of a dish that way. You know, we're blending so many things, and, you know, I like to blend, too, but I don't want everything to be lost in such a, you know, a whirlwind of flavors that you can't really enjoy them. I like each flavor to be separate and pronounced and, you know, to be a, an individual component of the dish you're making. So, you know, that's one of the reasons, like I said, I love Italian food is it's when you get down to the heart of it, a lot of it is very simple, you know, as compared to French cooking. A lot of it's very simple. It's just delicious and well-prepared, well-seasoned food. Well, it's very healthy also because you have the Mediterranean diet, which is like you know, everybody, everybody talks about it. The, the constantly rave about the fact, that, you know, the Mediterranean diet, and it's like, you know, the, the, the obesity levels and everything here in Italy seem to be a little, you know, a lot more less than in other places of the world. And I think it's connected to what, that in general, you know. Absolutely. Has a lot to do with it, you know. The, I think a lot of how you guys eat in Italy too, and how you take time to savor a meal, and how the Americans rush, 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 and just wolf food down. You know, it's it's more of an event in Italy here. It's just an inconvenience. And you know, you know what strikes me, um, Chef and and Lazim and, and Elizabeth, and you will understand this too. It's a, the same concept as the American kitchens that put as much cabinetry in the kitchen as they can just because they can um, and, and the, the magnificent meals that are made in the smallest Italian kitchens or the smallest kitchens, uh, it, it, one does not have anything to do with another so less is, is more and it relates so it's parallel to food um, and and kitchen design too, because with a, when you when you have a kitchen design that has it's it's just cabinets for every square inch and uh, which is I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but if you, you your eye doesn't have room to breathe to see some beauty, say a piece of art or a sculpture or something else, and you don't build in that beauty. And it's it's a it's a clutter. It's a visual. It can be a lot of visual clutter. So I, I really see a parallel. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a very good point. I think you're right, Susan, about the the connection between the simplicity of the Italian way of life and everything. I mean, yes, it, it's a country that has all these complex issues about you know, oh, you know, you guys don't have this, you don't have that, but. I think the way of life here, the simplicity, the way just people, you know, it's more humanistic. I mean, I, I, I miss certain things of the States, and it's true that, uh, you know, there's a lot of convenience in the States that you don't have over here, but also the pace of life here, and, and also the family relationships that somehow in America, I'm not, I don't want to generalize, but it's some, some, some families have lost that, the, the sense of like, you know, everybody around the kitchen, ta the kitchen table, everybody around, you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's what I've been here for 20 years since I I moved here from Miami 1992. To me, it's kind of like my heart gets emotional about it, and she knows it. She knows how emotional about uh, I am about Italy. That I love this place. I mean, it's. Uh, but you know, you know, and I I I will bet that uh, you're talking about slowing down a little bit, a different pace. I will bet that if I was not so harried in that and and. My head was all in so many different places in that metro two hours ago that I would not have lost my phone. I would have paid attention. I was harried. It was hectic. I was, and and now it's it's gone. And I, I I so I hear I relate to what you're saying on another level that I know what my own pace is and maybe how it could be a little better. Yeah. 
Well, tomorrow night we're going to go to the Buffy party, and then there we're going to relax, and I'm going to introduce you to some nice people, have some wine, chill, <laughs> get in the mood of a... Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn. I'm, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> open student for Italian living. I'm open. Just tell me what to do. Tell me okay. what to. <laughs> it's, it's it, uh, the furniture fair is hectic. It doesn't mean that everything's so relaxed. You know, you run around like a maniac, but you find these pockets of place where just people relax and they're having a great time. And yeah, and, and it's, it's a, it's a unique event. I'm very happy that you made it over here. It's very special. Yeah. Yeah. So, Chef, it's your turn next time to come on over. I'm telling you, I am counting down the days till we can get over. I, I told Lisa our passports actually expired, and I told her that we need to go get new passports because if the opportunity arises, you know, and I can go, I'm going. I, I don't want to go without her, though, so uh, we are still, you know, we have a little bit of time before we'll be able to yeah. travel. But, um uh, in fact, my, my little 12 year old, over 12 year old little Bernese Mountain Dog is woofing on the side here now. She wants to go out. Uh, she's when we got her, we thought she was going to last nine years. That's what they told her, and now she's 12, and we're we're not in a hurry for her to go. But uh, she's been a blessing every every extra day. But she must be a little bit Italian. In that. <laughs> she, I'm telling you, she had the well. The Bernese are Switzerland's not that far from Italy. I know. So. <laughs> And they were made for Holland cheese, so what better, uh, what better route? Except she would have eaten the cheese. She would have stopped and uh, emptied the cart out. So what do you think, Chef? I think we had a good show today. I think so, and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we made a nice dessert here. I showed everybody how quick it and easy it really was to make tiramisu, and I hope people are going to be trying it in their own homes. The recipe's there. Now you got a video to help you. And uh, thank you so much for uh, stopping on, Nazim and Elisabetta. Thanks, nice thanks for the invitation. You, right? And uh, Susan, for all you do and for coming to us from Milan on probably very little sleep, uh, I really appreciate it. Oh, my absolute pleasure. My pleasure. And, and I'm glad I could make this happen. And really, I mean, this is a big deal to show authentic, amazing Italian design. And I'm so happy to have been able to do that. So, so till next week. Till next week. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.